Hey everyone, welcome to Gromed. So, this is a video of the images uh, asked in the FMGE from the radiology. So, nowadays, image based questions are being asked in the FMGE. Uh, all maximum radiographic images are asked uh, along with the correlation with the surgery or medicine. So, here I covered certain important images you, which you must know. So, let's see certain probes, uh, the ultrasound probes, which are used. So, the ultrasound probes, they are uh, classified into the various uh, categories according to their frequency. So, as you can see here, so as you can see here, the linear probe, it is a high frequency probe and uh, it is used for the investigations like thyroid, scrotum and breast. One line you need to remember here is the frequency of the probe is directly proportional to the resolution and inversely proportional to the depth. That means if it is high frequency, then the resolution will be better. So, uh, image-based questions are asked giving the probe and uh, identify which kind of probe it is. Then the linear means you can see here, it is straight line. Then moving on to the curvy linear, then the uh, curve present on the surface and it is a uh, low frequency and used mainly for the abdomen and the pelvis. Uh, so, image can be given and you need to identify it or the question can be asked uh, with using this probe, which organs do you assess? Then the faced array, as you can see that uh, the faced array is very small and it is used for echocardiography and it is also a low frequency probe. And moving on, the endocavity probe, as you can see that it is a stick kind of a thing that we can put it inside the cavity and look for it. And it is uh, high frequency and used mostly for the transvaginal sonography, transrectal sonography. Then moving on, we'll discuss a very famous image asked from the radiology in the previous years. So this is a uh, chest x-ray and you can see here uh, that the ribs are marked and the question are asked marking the rib as you can see here uh, it is marked and asked which rib it is so if you see it this one is the first rib the second rib the third rib and the fourth rib so this is the fourth rib so based on the mark you need to identify which kind of rib it is then moving on we'll discuss certain mri images uh, so, how do we differentiate the image, whether it is a MRI or the CT scan? On the CT scan, the bone looks white. As you can see here, the bone looks white and in the MRI, the bone looks black. And also, the MRI images are T1 weighted or T2 weighted. So, how do you identify it as T1 or T2? So, if there, the CSF is black colored, and on the table, uh, the gray will be hypo intense, black color like the CSF, and the white matter will be white. Then in the T2 image, you can see the CSF is white in color. Likewise, the gray matter will also be white in color, and the white matter will be black in color or the hypoten hypo intense. So these are certain ways to differentiate between the MRI, the CT. Then moving on, we'll discuss certain uh, important images related to the skeletal system. So this is the image of a giant cell tumor and we can see the soap bubble appearance. So this is a, so this is a tumor of the epiphysis and it is usually seen between the age of the 20 to 25 years. Then the next chondroblastoma, it is also a tumor of the epiphysis and in that you can see a chicken wire calcification and Codman's triangle. Then the next image, the onion peel lesion seen in the Ewing sarcoma, a very important image and very favorite question of the FMG. So you can see like this, uh, onion pin lesion given on the x-ray. And this is usually seen in the children, most common tumor in the children. The next image is of the osteoid osteoma. In this, you can see a needles present and these needles, they release the prostaglandins. So it is a tumor of the diaphysis. So you can identify, by look you can identify it by looking at this, this needles. Then the next image of the amantadenoma, uh, it is also a diaphysian lesion and most common site is the tibia and it is a malignant tumor. Then the next image is a simple bone cyst in that you can see a fallen uh, fragment kind of a thing like this. Here you can see the fallen fragment, a uh, neat falling from a tree kind of appearance and the most common location is the humerus. 
then the next image is of the aneurysmal go bone cyst and in this you can see a multiple uh, fluid levels blood and the fluid filter levels because in this uh, tumor there will be bleeding occurring then another very popular image is the osteochondroma it is the extra bone growth and it looks something like this so you can easily identify it as a osteochondroma then uh, moving on to another very important topic that is the osteosarcoma in that you can see the sunburst appearance you can see like this the sunburst appearance and by looking at this image you can easily find out that it is an osteosarcoma and questions are asked to what is the reason for this sunburn appearance and it is due to the formation of the new bone and also this reaction is called as sunburst reaction and moving on uh, the heart bone with stiffle calcification seen in the enchondromas enchondroma mostly involves the hand and you can see that is finding like stippled calcification. Then the next x-ray is of a child uh, who is suffering from scurvy and it is due to the vitamin C deficiency. So on this chest x-ray you can see the classical findings like the Wimberger sign, this sign, the Wimberger sign and you can also see the piston screw, the line coming here that is the piston screw, then the trum trummer field zone and you can also see a white line here like this, uh, this Franker's white line. So these are certain important findings seen in the scurvy. And moving on to the rickets. In, in the rickets, you can see the classical findings like the spraying, fraying and the cupping. And rickets is usually due to the vitamin D deficiency. So uh, this is x-ray of the legs seen in the rickets. And you can see the bowing of the legs which is also called as genovarum. Then moving on. The next image is also a very famous image uh, you seen in the ankylosing spondylitis. In this, you can see the bamboo spine. Bamboo spine means the spines have joined with each other. You can see like this the bamboo spine and it is the classical finding seen in the ankylosing spondylitis, most commonly seen in the males. Then moving on to um, fish mouth appearance. This is seen in the osteoporosis and it is most common seen in the females. So as you can see the fish mouth appearance like this. It is due to the weak bones. So let's see certain skull findings seen in the systemic diseases. Like if there is multiple myeloma, you can see multiple punched out lesions. As you can see here the punched out lesions like this. This is seen in the multiple myeloma. And in the uh, next image you can see that there is a multiple spicules kind of a thing. It is called as a crew cut appearance. Crew cut appearance or hair on end appearance and it is seen in hemolytic disorders like thalassemia or the sickle cell anemia. Also a very repeatedly asked image. Then the next image is of the fibrous dysplasia. As you can see here this deformity is called a shepherd group deformity. And most commonly femur neck is involved in this. So these are certain images related to the skeletal system. Now let's see uh, certain images related to the brain hemorrhage. Whenever uh, a trauma patient comes to the emergency, the first investigation you need to do is to non-contrast the CT or the initial investigation in the head trauma, it is the non-contrast CT. Okay, so this is a multiple times asked as a clinical case as a one-liner. So you need to remember this. So these are the certain findings seen on the non-contrast CT. So let's see them one by one. This finding seen in the EDH, extradural hemorrhage, by convex lens shaped asked multiple times so these images you need to uh, remember it because in the past years there have been questions repeatedly asking on this topic either in relation to the surgery or the medicine so there's no way that you cannot see these images or read about these brain hemorrhages you need to know each and every point related to these hemorrhages and i have also uploaded the video on my youtube channel the link is in the description box for the brain hemorrhages you can see that video for all the points related to the brain hemorrhage. Uh, the next image, this image is of a subdural hemorrhage and you can see here the bleeding is in the shape, shape of a crescent, crescent shaped bleeding and this is a classical finding seen in the subdural hemorrhage. Now this the image, you can see a star like this called as a star of death appearance seen with the subarachnoid hemorrhage. Then here in this image, you can see that the bleeding is in the ventricle, called as the interventricular bleed. Acute, acute interventricular hemorrhage. 
then in this image you can see that there is a bleeding occurring in the parenchyma of the brain so the most common cause of the parenchymal bleed is the hypertension asked one liner and the most common location is the putamen this is also an asked one liner then the next image this image you can see here that there is a, a calcification scene so this is due to the craniopharyngioma the classical finding seen in this is the it is a suppress cellar mass and you can see the cystic calcification in this so whenever these lines are given in the question you need to mark it as a craniopharyngeum then the next image this image is of so this is a finding seen in the stroke weber syndrome and in this the leptomeninges are also involved then moving on this is an image of a diffuse axonal injury you can see multiple white petechiae in this so if you find a if you see a finding like this then you need to mark the answer as the diffuse axonal injury so next we'll discuss a certain emerging travels related to the git so these are the images of the barium studies which are frequently asked in the fnv so in this in this image you can see a pouch like this and this is seen in the zenker diverticulum so it is an esophageal disorder in which there will be history of the regurgitation of the food and there will be halitosis and dysphagia and whenever you see this image you need to mark it as a zenker diverticulum then in the second image it is the image of the diffuse esophageal spasm cox drew appearance and it is an hypermotility disorder of the esophagus this image has been asked multiple times you need to remember this image and along with that the findings seen in the diffuse esophageal spasm so this is the image of the ecclesia cardia as you can see the bird beak appearance here and the esophagus is also dilated so it is a hypermotility disorder of the esophagus So in this image you can see that there's apple core deformity like this and this is seen in the colon cancer. So in this image in the next image you can see that uh, there is stenosis of the of the pylorus as there is not complete filling of the barrier. So it is suggestive of the pyloric stenosis. Then the next image this image uh you can see the sort tooth appearance like this and this is a classical finding seen in the so this finding is seen in the diverticulosis in this image you can see that there is a claw sign and this is suggestive of the intussusception and intussusception on the usg you can see another finding that is the target lesion or a donut lesion it looks like something like this asked multiple times so you need to remember this image as well and along with the image you need to remember the clinical features are uh, describing the intussusception so this is a video of pneumoperitoneum and this is known as the football sign uh, the belly of the child looks like a football uh, filled with the air so it is called as a football sign in the next image in this image you can see that there is a, a coiling of this rainy's tube so this is finding seen in the tracheoesophageal fistula So question are asked on the types so you need to know also the types there are five types and the most common is the type 3 and along with that you need to know the clinical features and what treatment do we do and when do we do these all points are covered in the surgery then the next image as you can see in this image a classical coffee bean like sign and this is suggestive of sigmoid volvulus then the next image in this image you can see the two a bubbles called as a double bubble sign seen in so this double bubble sign is seen in two conditions duodenal atresia and annular pancreas then this you can see the triple bubble sign three bubbles like this and this sign triple bubble sign seen in and this triple bubble sign is seen in the ileal atresia then the next image this image is done to look for the imperforate anus this image is also asked multiple times then uh, in this usg finding you can see that there is multiple stones here called stones here this is the gall bladder and the gall stone and there is posterior ascotic shadow seen here so this is an image of the gonadotropic nitiasis 
so that's it in this video guys this was a short video on the important images from the skeletal system and the GIT in the next video I will cover the important images related to the respiratory system the chest x-rays and the uh, gynecological images also I hope this video was useful to you if you like the video please share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel for more such useful videos related to the FMG thank you guys